So graph drawing is a very big part of exam preparation for physical science, especially paper one. And this is true for grade 10, 11, and 12. So assuming that we have to deal with these graph type questions, we're going to have a look at an, a question here from an old exam paper. Here, they basically did the practical that we do um, in grade 11. And they have a trolley where they are varying the force. Now, normally they vary the force with uh, adding mass pieces over a frictionless pulley. Don't get confused here. Adding that mass does not change the mass of the trolley. The only thing it changes is the force experienced by the trolley. The trolley still has a constant mass. So here they say that for each value of F, they determine the acceleration A of the trolley. They obtain the following results. And then they give us the data here. So what do they control? They control the force applied on the trolley. Therefore, the force is going to be my independent variable, making acceleration my dependent variable. And it says here, mention one method they can use to vary the force if you can add more mass pieces. Sometimes they do this experiment where instead of using mass pieces, they use elastics, so you can add more elastics to create a larger force. Describe one method that they could use to determine the acceleration A. So you can analyze a ticket timer tape by attaching it or measuring the time it takes and the distance covered. And therefore, you can calculate acceleration using that. Then draw a graph of the results they obtain. Now, when I draw this graph, I'm not going to use a ruler. You have to use a ruler. Remember that? And then I'm just going to move so we have some more space on this side. I'm going to place my independent variable on my x-axis. My independent variable here was force. And remember, we have to add a unit. It's measured in Newton. And acceleration is then going to be my dependent variable. This goes on my y-axis. Remember the unit meters per square second. Then I have to go and plot my points. So um, for acceleration, it starts from 0, and it goes up all the way to 1,5. So 1,5 up there means I'm going to use increments of 0, 0,3, 1,5, 1,2, 0, 0,9, 0, 0,6, 0, 0,3. There's an important basic about drawing graphs, and it's making sure that it actually does make sense mathematically. And then if we look at the values for force, it starts from 0, 0,4 all the way to 2. So I'm once again starting from 0. This is going to be 2, 0. I'm going to do let's say 0, 0,4, 0, 0,8, 1, 2, 1, 1,6, and one, then 2, 0. So you need to make sure that it actually makes sense on your graph paper. Now it's simply plotting the points. So I'm going to have 0, 0,4 for force and 0, 0,3 for acceleration, 0, 0,8 for force, 0, 0,6 for acceleration, and I'm going to continue just plotting the points. When you draw a graph like this, you also have to give a name. So this is graph showing the relationship between force and acceleration. Remember when you draw graphs, the detail here also accounts for marks. So normally relationship is a good word to use when you are comparing two things with one another. And then I simply draw a line of the best fit. You are going to use a ruler. And remember, that line is going to be the line that touches most of the dots. And because I already know that force is directly proportional to acceleration, according to Newton's second law, I can extrapolate this graph to the point of origin. Now, sometimes uh, this is a dangerous thing to do if you're not sure that they are, in fact, directly proportional. So don't do that unless you are sure. What is Newton's second law? When a resultant force acts upon an object, that object accelerates in the direction of the net force. The acceleration is directly proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the mass. Now, before I continue with the rest of the questions, I want to explain that to you using Newton's law in symbol format. If you look at acceleration here, it's directly proportional to force. Now, if I look at mass, mass stays constant. The mass of the trolley stays constant. So if I want to go and calculate the gradient for this graph, 
Remember the basics. Gradient equals the change in y over the change in x. Now, that's from mathematics, like almost, I think, grade 9, if I remember correctly. So the change in y here is going to be the change in a over the change in x. If you look at Newton's second law, if I want m on its own, or let's rather say if I want a on its own, I can divide by m on both sides. You see that? Okay. If I want m on its own, I can divide by a on both sides. Right. If I do this and I can cancel a on this side, I can see that f over a, it's f net, but I'm just going to use f now, f over a is equal to m. Now, if you look at the gradient that I calculated here, it's a over f, not f over a. You see that? Which means that what I've actually calculated is, if you remember, this is actually m over 1. So, if I want a over f, it's actually 1 over m. So, the gradient of this graph is going to be equal to 1 over the mass. Just keep that in mind. Let's go back to our questions. We've now drawn our graph. The mark allocation there, only three marks. Normally it will be for labeling the axis correctly, for giving a description of the graph, as well as plotting the points correctly. The next question, the learner, no, use the graph to calculate the value of the gradient. We've done, identify the value that the gradient of the graph represents. You see how this question could have been interpreted as mass immediately. So be careful. Go and use your basic mathematic knowledge to make sure that the gradient that you've calculated is actually what you think it is. Because in this case, the correct answer is actually 1 over m and not the mass. But let's quickly go and use some of these values. Uh, let's use gradient equals change in y over change in x, which is change in a over change in f. I'm going to use two points. I'm going to use, let's say, 1,5 minus 0, 0,3, so I've taken this one and this one, and then I'm going to divide that by 2, 0, minus 0, 0,4. I'm taking the same values in the same row as what I've done for acceleration. 1,5 minus 0, 0,3 gives me 1,2, and 2 minus 0, 0,4 gives me 1,6. So if you use your calculator, 1,2 divided by 1,6 gives you 3 over 4, or 0, 0,75, which is equal to 1 over m. Now, if the learner applies a force of 2f to the trolley, calculate the new acceleration. So, what we can now go and do is we can say, okay, so if 1 over m is a constant, I can use that in the next calculation. I can say that 1 over m is actually equal to change in A over change in F. And I'm going to use 1 over M now a value of 0, 0,75. And then change in A is now my unknown. Now I used to have 1,6 as my change in F, so now I'm going to use 2 times F, which is 2 times 1,6. And now if I want to go and calculate the change in A, it's going to be equal to 0, 0,75 multiplied by 2 times 1,6, which is actually 3,2. So 3,2 times 0.75 gives me 2,4. So my acceleration, 2,4 meters per square second. Now, if you look at it from our calculation up here, we know that because these two are directly proportional, if the force doubles, the acceleration doubles. But they didn't ask us to use proportionality relationships. They asked us to use calculations. So here, just saying that it will be the same or double is not going to be good enough. You actually need to show the calculation here. Then let's look at the next question. The learners now apply a force of 4F to the trolley without calculating the answer. Use your answer to question 7.5 to describe how the acceleration A changes as the force applied changes. Now we know that if the acceleration and the force are directly proportional to one another. We know that if this is going to be 4F, it's going to be 4A. And if A originally was 1,2, 4 times 1,2 is going to give me 4,8 meters per square second. 
as my acceleration. 